Hello, Mr. Srinivasan. It's nice to have you with us here today at WAVES. We're really excited for you to join us. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions just about how you learned about WAVES to begin with and your background with the organization. I've been hearing about WAVES. First of all, thank you very much for that kind okay. welcome. I've been hearing about WAVES for many years. And this year, the conference chair happened to be someone I knew from before. And he said, Rajiv, you better write a paper mm -hmm. and show up. So that's what happened. But to be honest, um, I'm a technical person. You know, my background is in computing and, and business and so forth. So I've always been very intimidated by all these wonderful scholars, traditional pundits and so forth for uh, who come to Waves. So I'm, even after coming here, I'm walking around saying to myself, you know, I should better shut up so that they don't know how ignorant I am about Vedic issues. And uh, so what I chose to do was to look at something a little interdisciplinary and that has a bit of technology in it as well as social content and so I've written a paper on uh, education and how to um, reintroduce some traditional content that we had in the past in India and uh, which may well be extremely relevant as education and the job market and so forth and technology going through a massive churn here so I'm going to present that uh, paper tomorrow. But this morning, I was um, managing, or I, I guess sort of handling a, uh, a panel on education, which is also highly instructive. So in a nutshell, you know, this is an exciting place for me to be because I'm learning a lot of new things. And several people that I've met here already are people who are really famous mm. in the field. You know, I've read things that they've written. So it's great to meet them face yeah. to face. That's right, and, and you talked about learning new things, and one of the unique aspects of this conference is the new papers and the content that's being produced. So you've taken time to look over some of the papers and review some of the papers. Could you give your thoughts on the type of content that um, you've seen and what you think it's contributing to the field? Yeah, I was looking at uh, one of the tracks in the conference as a reviewer, so I must have reviewed, I don't know, 15, 20 papers, and these were more on the technical side. So, for example, there was a paper that was looking at hygiene, you know, about uh, how did people manage hygiene in the old Saraswati era cities, for example. Uh, another was about, um, um, about agriculture. You know, what are the kinds of traditional knowledge? And, and here I think we're looking at Vedic in a not so narrow sense of just whatever is in the Vedas because there is an enormous literature that is not religious or spiritual, that is part of our tradition. And that encompasses the entire sort of uh, gamut of everything that we see in normal life. Like I mentioned, architecture, so hygiene. You know, how do you construct buildings that are very clean and neat and you have all these, you know, uh, water channels and things like that. So um, the hygiene is important to, to a populace. So how do you do that in architecture? Similarly, how do you design... Um, I may not, design may not be the right uh, word, but how do you create um, um, new breeds of cattle, right? You know, how do you uh, very carefully create new breeds of rice, mm. etc., over centuries, right? Mm -hmm. So that whole thing is part of, in my opinion, the Vedic umbrella, which I did not know earlier, because I thought it was all about religious and, and uh, spiritual literature, but it's not. This is much broader. It's about life. You know, uh, all kinds of uh, areas come under this umbrella, which is something that I realized only after I started reading these papers. Exactly. And uh, speaking of the papers and being at this conference, learning new things, you were talking about that. What kinds of things do you hope to take away from this conference? I mean, it is only three days, so, right. but going forward, what kinds of things would you like to have said, I, I learned this and this changed my perspective about such and such an issue? Well, the big thing is the interdisciplinarity because most of the people here are not experts in just one narrow field. They pick and choose from, you know, several related fields. And that is wonderful for me because I, you know, my basic area is innovation. Innovation is also a highly interdisciplinary field where you steal, if you will, stuff <laughs> from, you know, all over the place. So here I see, and I've already met, you know, certain uh, uh, people who are very well-known in their areas, for example, an astronomer, actually two astronomers. Mm -hmm. So my question is, you know, um, what can I learn about um, the antiquity 
of uh, our civilization from the work that these people have done. A second question is, what can I learn about traditional Indian economics and innovation? And to be precise about this, it is believed that um, economic historians agree on this, that India was by far the largest GDP country in the world, you know, 2,000 years ago. For example, there is this guy named Angus Madison, who's written the most uh, well-received uh, economic history of the world. His time frame starts in 0 CE. And at that time, he says India had 33% of the world's wow. GDP. And the question is, how, right? Well, one explanation is that we had a lot of people, mm. right? We had probably 30% of the world's people, right? But that's not a sufficient explanation. A second explanation is that we had tremendous agricultural productivity. And if you look around, uh, it is those areas of the world that are well watered and are able to produce crops that have been the uh, most important locations for prosperity. You look at the Nile Valley, Mesopotamia, look at the Yangtze Valley, and the Indus Saraswati Valley. So that's part of the answer, but it's not the whole thing. Yeah. So there is speculation that there was tremendous industrial activity, right? So there is a paper here that talks about industrial activity, uh, including metalworking, mining, etc. Mm -hmm. that India did. Mm -hmm. So this, in a, in a very strong way, goes back to my field of innovation, right? So how do I justify um, those conjectures? You know, uh, when somebody says this happened 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. well, then I depend on the astronomer yeah. to say, yeah, this seems reasonable because there are clues for example, in the Mahabharata or something which dated to 5,000 years ago. Yeah. So that's the kind of sort of serendipitous stuff that I'm hoping I'll pick up in a little bits and pieces and yeah. I'll pick up people's cards and I'll be able to contact them later. Awesome. Well, that sounds very good. I hope you have a great time at the conference. Thank you Thank very you. much.